After the collapse of the Gupta Empire, regional kingdoms developed which patronized different religions. Adi Sankarajaja, who was born in Kerala in the 8th century, was one of the three main teachers of medieval India who helped in the revival of Hinduism. The other two teachers were Madhva and Ramanuja. Adi Sankarajaja consolidated the Advaita Vedanta philosophy. Although he died when he was 32, he had travelled all over India on foot to teach his philosophy and discuss with other philosophers about Hinduism and the Vedas. By winning debates with leading philosophers of various traditions, including Jainism and Buddhism, he slowed down the spread of Buddhism throughout India and revived Hinduism. This period saw the development of the great regional temples such as Jagannatha in Puri in Orissa, the Shiva temple in Sidambaran in Tamil Nadu, and the Shiva temple in Tanjavur, also in Tamil Nadu. All of these temples had an effigy of a major deity and were centers of religious and political power. Islam had reached Indian shores around the 8th century via traders crossing the Arabian Sea and the Muslim armies which conquered the northwest provinces. Muslim political power began with the Turkish Sultanate around 1200 CE. The Mughal Empire began in 1526 CE. Akbar was a liberal emperor who allowed Hindus to practice freely. However, in the late 17th century, his great-grandson Aurangzeb destroyed many temples and restricted Hindu practice. Robert Clive's victory at the Battle of Plassey brought the Mughal Empire to an abrupt end. British people working for the East India Trading Company started to assimilate into the warrior and noble class of native Indians, the Khatriyas. However, they did not hold the Brahmins, priest class, in higher regard, and the Sutras became regarded as untouchable. The arrival of Christian missionaries led many Hindus to convert to Christianity. In response to this disruption of Hindu traditions, the 19th century saw the development of the Hindu Renaissance. The first leading reformer of Hinduism was Raja Ramon Roy. Apart from his Bengali mother tongue, he studied Sanskrit, Arabic, Persian, Hebrew, Greek and Latin. He read the main scriptures of the world religions and concluded that there was not much difference between them. In 1828, he founded the Brahma Samaj, based on the concept of one supreme god from the Upanishads. He had to overcome opposition from the orthodox Hindu community to defend the Brahma Samaj. Together with Christian missionary William Carey, he campaigned against sati. This was the practice of widows jumping onto the funeral pyres of their husbands. It is thought to have originated in the 14th century during the Islamic invasion of Rajput territories in northwest India. Hindus committed mass suicides called Johor to avoid the consequence of invasions, including mass rape and servitude. Raja Ramon Roy had called on the Governor General of India, Lord William Bentinck, to abolish Shati. Lord Bentinck passed a law abolishing it in 1829. Ramon Roy believed in the social equality of all human beings. He also argued that the Vedas and Upanishads described monotheism. The Brahma Samaj's main aim was worship of the eternal God. It was against priesthood, rituals, idolatry and sacrifices. It focused on prayers, meditation and reading of the scriptures. It led to the emergence of rationalism and enlightenment in India. The Brahma Samaj believed in the unity of all religions. After Ramahan Roy died in 1833, the Brahma Samaj was supported by Prince Dharakanath Tagore and Pandit Ram Chandra Bidavagish. Dharakanath's eldest son, Dibendranath Tagore, joined the Brahma Samaj in 1842 and became its second main leader. Later in 1911, Dibendranath's son, Rabindranath Tagore, became the leader of the Adi Brahma Samaj. They all aimed to remove what they regarded as superstition from Hinduism. 
Another important figure of this period was Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. He too believed in the unity of all religions and that pure devotion was at the centre of Hinduism. His disciple Vivekananda developed his ideas and linked them to a political vision of a united India. Vivekananda is credited with having introduced the Indian philosophies of Vedanta and Yoga to the Western world, as well as bringing Hinduism to the status of a major world religion during the late 19th century. As we see, all of the Hindu reformers of the 19th century advocated a return to the Hinduism of the Vedas and Upanishads. When giving independence to India, Britain decided to partition it along religious grounds between predominantly Hindu India and predominantly Muslim West and East Pakistan. This led to communal violence and the mass migration of over 15 million people. In recent decades, the Hindu diaspora has spread widely outside India. Younger generations who have grown up outside India have preferred these universal aspects of Hinduism. This has led to concern among older generations of the Hindu diaspora about the perpetuation of the more orthodox Hindu traditions they left behind. Meanwhile in India, Hinduism has continued to evolve. Hindus have always believed that various paths lead towards God. He, the one and undifferentiated, who, by the manifold application of his powers, produces, in the beginning, different objects for a hidden purpose and, in the end, withdraws the universe into himself, is indeed the self-luminous. May he endow us with a clear intellect. Thank you.